All right. Homework questions. I had number two. Can you tell me what number two is? Okay, well, give me whichever. Give me the problem. Give me the problem. Solving for X, yes? All right. Do you remember how to do it? Of course you do, yes. All right, what multiplies to 21X squared but adds to negative 10X? Negative 7 and negative 3. So I have X squared minus 7X minus 3X plus 21 equals 0. Then you slash it. Take out an X. Middle sign stays. What do I take out here? 3. What's left? Yes? So now x minus 7 times x minus 3. That's the old stuff. New stuff, each piece goes to 0. x minus 7 goes to 0. x minus 3 goes to 0, which means x equals... What? To factor? Okay, if it's I'll say, if it's a one step equation, Dozier, this is for you. If you get to this point, you can say x equals seven, x equals three. Yes. But if it's more than one, if it's a two-step equation, you need to write it because you got to show your work. So if it was like 2x minus 3 equals 0, you'd need to say 2x equals 3, x equals 3 over 2. Yes. Okay, I don't know. I don't have the problems. Pardon this interruption. At this time, seniors should report to our auditorium. All seniors should report to the auditorium. Thank you. Anytime. That's it. All right. I need to make it equal zero, so I'm going to move everything to one side. The question is, which do I move where? I want to keep my first term positive, so I'm going to move these to this side. Okay. If I move the other side to the right, I would have negative x squared, and that's no bueno. So. I'm going to move, and if you want to do this so that you can see what it is you're doing, what is it plus x? I do it all at one time. x squared minus 8x minus 65 equals 0. Everybody okay with that? What? Somebody say no. Okay. What multiplies to negative 65? x squared but adds to negative 8. Negative 13 and... Five. So, could I shortcut this one? Yes. Why? Because, right, there's a no leading coefficient here. So, I could really write this as x minus 13, x plus 5, equals 0. If you're not confident enough in your factoring skills just yet, you certainly may group it. It still groups. Now each piece goes to 0, which means that x could minus 13 could be 0, x plus 5 could be 0. I have two solutions. Yes. Okay, where did I confuse you? You want me to group it? Okay. x squared minus 13x plus 5x minus 65. With me there? Did somebody take my coffee? My coffee. All right. 
slash GCF of the first two. I'll just keep going because I'm OCD. I can't leave it half done. Losing with x minus 13. GCF of the last two. 5 leaves me with, it better be x minus 13 because that's what I got the first time. Take that common factor of x minus 13 out. And it leaves me with x plus 5. Yes. I'll do number 2 if you want. If you just give me the equation. Give me the equation. Either one, whichever one you want. Equal zero. Third order equals zero. I'm good there. GCF. 4x. If I take a 4x out, what's left? I can't factor this one any further, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to say, but wait, I have two things multiplied together to give me zero. So I'm going to set both of them to zero. Which would mean x is zero or x is two. Does that make sense? What else? Mm-hmm. No, that's okay. All right, time to get everything to the same side. I'm going to move this one and this one. So I get 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. Everybody good there? GCF? Nope. So what multiplies to 36x squared but adds to negative 12x? Negative 6 and negative 6. Did anybody notice anything about this one? It's a perfect square trinomial. I could look at this, and how do I know it's perfect square trinomial? Three things I'm looking for. The square dance and the plus is what? In the last call for seniors to head to the auditorium at this time. No seniors should be in the hall. You should all be in the auditorium. Thank you. Multiply those and double. You get what's in the middle. So to factor it, it's really easy. I do the square root of the first one, the square root of the last one, and I put this middle sign here. So what this really means is that 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 equals 0. I don't need to do repeated solutions. I can just write them one time. So 2x minus 3 equals 0, 2x equals 3, so x is 3 over 2. So this one just has one solution instead of two. And that's okay. We're going to talk about that today. Yes. Um, the first one was 2x squared equals 5x. 2x squared equals 5x. Again, I'm going to make it equal zero. So I'm going to keep the 2x squared positive, and I'm going to move the 5x over. GCF. If I take that out, I'm left with 2x minus 5. Again, two things multiply to give me 0, so I set both of them to 0. So x could be 0 or 2x minus 5 could be 0. Here I'm going to add 5 and then divide by 2. Two solutions. Anything else? Going once, twice. Woo, right on time. Give me the problem. 17. Move everything to the same side, right? So I'm going to move the x, I'm going to move the 21, so I have 2x squared minus 
minus x minus 21 equals 0. What multiplies to negative 42x squared but adds to negative 1x? Look at you, negative 7x positive 6x. I'd had to think about that one a little bit longer, so I'm glad you told me. 2x squared minus 7x plus 6x minus 21 equals 0. Flash it. GCF for the first two. What's left? There you go. Middle sign, GCF of the last two. What's left? I hope it's 2x minus 7. 2x minus 7 is my common factor. It leaves me with x plus 3. Now everybody to 0. 2x minus 7 equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. So 2x is 7. And x is 7 over 2. There's one solution, and the other solution is, of course, negative. I'm going to move everything from the left to the right and get 0 equals x squared minus 2x plus 49. What multiplies to, are you sure that's right? Oh, 2x squared. Well, then I'm moving them over here. So it's x squared minus 49. That looks like a special pattern. What's the pattern? Different, not trinomial. Trinomial is 3. Difference of squares. So it's x minus 7, x plus 7. There you go. Easy peasy. Lemon is crazy. All right, put everything up. Right here. Yo, brown always on my desk. All right. If you want graphing paper, it may help you to accurately locate the solutions. I am going to show you how to use your calculator to find them as well. You can use your calculator, but you're going to have to do an accurate graph for me. But then you can use your calculator to check it. You are going to have to recall how we graph quadratics, standard form, vertex form, and intercept form. Remember all of those lovely ways that we graph. Before we actually graph, let's talk about what it is we're looking at. So I want to take one of the ones, let's see, that we did. Right day. What? Let's do. Let me set up. Let me set us up first for what we're gonna do. We've been talking about solving, and as we solve, we have factored and solved to find out what x equals. Right? Say right, because that's right. Okay, so here's my equation, yes? And so what we've been doing is saying, well, if this equals zero, what value does x have? But what I want you to do is I want you to think graphically. If I set this equal to zero, what really am I finding? Graphically. Say it again. The x-intercept. That's exactly right. Good job. Because x-intercepts are found... When y equals 0, and y-intercepts we know are found when x equals 0. So if I look at this, really all I've done is replace the y with 0, yes? So if my equation equals 0, I can just look for the x-intercept or intercept. Does it make sense to you now why we've been getting two solutions for these? 
if I graph this, let's think about what, what a parabola looks like when you graph it. I see two solutions, right? This is so one solution and the x value of it, and this is another solution. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes perfect sense. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad. Okay. Okay. Oh, I thought you were, no? Okay. There are three scenarios we can have with quadratics. If when I graph the quadratic, it looks like this. I obviously have two solutions, right? Can you think of a time when I would only have one solution? There you go. If the vertex actually sits on the x-axis, it could open up or down, it doesn't matter. That is just one solution, and that one solution is the vertex itself. Oh, I, like what I wrote over here. Okay, tell me when you caught up. What's the other scenario? How would it not cross at all? The x intercepts the x axis. I could have a scenario where I have absolutely no solutions, and that may happen if I have this parabola that keeps going forever, but it never actually crosses the. Who went and got those for you? <laughs> Does that make sense? Everybody okay? Yeah. Not if it's going up like that, no. Yeah. Oh, well, it's going up and out, but it's never going to come back down to the... If you look, we're talking about where it crosses here. It will eventually, eventually cross Y, but it won't eventually cross X. So that's the difference. Okay. Y'all good? Okay, you get this. All right, Sully. Stay with me. You ready? I want you to take just a minute, recall back to whenever we first graphed, and I want you to graph this quadratic, this parabola. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, graph it without your calculator first. Yes, do it on graph paper. Remember, in, in, in standard form, I need to first find the vertex, and then I can use the y-intercept plot. You're telling a story. Wow. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible as I use these little lines on my graph the whole parabola. Graph the whole parabola. So if x equals one half, now I need to plug that in to find where on y it goes, right? It's going to be a little bit nasty. This is why I'm going to show you how to use your calculator. To show you it works. 
You gotta plug it in. One fourth minus one half is negative a fourth, and negative a fourth minus six is negative six and a fourth. One, two, three, four, five, six and a quarter. I want you to remember how hard this is to graph and how hard it is to find these solutions whenever we do this, whenever I show you how to do them on the calculator. I'm going to use that easy point, that y-intercept of 6, go over a half, go over a half, because that's not exactly a half. There we go. Okay, this is about the best I can do on my parabola early. Um, if you want a more accurate how it kind of whooshes out, you'd need a few more points, right? But the point that I'm getting to here is if I said 0 equals x squared minus x minus 6, and I asked you to solve for x, algebraically that's easy, right? What would I do? You just took a quiz on it. Factor it, right? What multiplies to negative 6 but adds to negative 1? Negative 3 and positive 2. And since there's no leading coefficient, it's a shortcut. Are y'all okay? We graphed it. I'm I am showing you how the algebraic solve and the graphic solve are the same thing. Well, but you'll have to graph it. But yes, and I'm gonna show you how to find the x-intercepts on the calculator. Easy point. I use negative six. All right, look, I just sidetracked a second. I don't want to get y'all confused, but I sidetracked for just a second and said if I solve this algebraically, I know that x equals 3 and x equals negative 2, right? Now I want you to look at your graph. Had I not done that, your parabola should be crossing your x-axis at 3 and negative 2 because those are the solutions. Yeah, I plugged it in. Well, one half. Not a whole lot. You can't trace. Yes, yes, yes. Second trace. Yes. I'm going to show you how to do that. Have y'all had a teacher show you how to do that before? Do you with the left mail, right mail? Oh, I am so impressed. Okay, well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Okay. So, you'll find out with me that I'm a little bit extra in whenever I show you how to do stuff because I like for you to know why. I feel like sometimes if you know why, it helps you. So, there's your there's your why that works. Now, let me show you just how to do it because some of you would just are just like, let, just show me how to do it and shut up. Okay. Here we go. 
on the calculator. You're going to have to graph them. You have seven for your homework, but you will graph them. So you're going to have to go back and remember, how do I graph in standard form? How do I graph in intercept form and vertex form, right? Because that stuff never goes away. When we learn stuff in here, it unfortunately never goes away. It just builds on each other. Okay, but let me show you on your calculator. If we solve graphically, take out your calculator. This is nice because as you start taking standardized tests, this is a tool that will help you solve any equation in the world as long as you make it equal zero first. Yeah. No, you have to actually graph it. I actually have the grid paper on there for you. Good question, but no. You need a graphing. You're going to have to have a graphing for this. Borrow mine right there. Okay. X squared minus X minus 6. Let's put it in our... I'm very excited to know that y'all have done this before. Oh, okay. Okay. Ready? Y equals... Right here. Y equals. Second lunch. Second bell of second lunch. Okay, we'll go when you need to go. Yeah. Did it move? Okay. Okay, what are y'all? Of course, they work on Friday. Okay, which means you have extra time. It's what? What'd you say? Okay, well, the quicker I get done, the quicker you get to start on it. Yeah. All right, x squared. This button, I feel like we've talked about this, have we not? This button is the variable button. It will pull up the x for you. It's right beside the green alpha button. x. Go with me. Let me. <laughs> killing me, Emma. You're killing me. This button right beside the green alpha button is your variable. <laughs> if, you, if you click it, it will be your X. All right, X. Uh, this button, does everybody see this button? The squared button will let you raise that to the second power. You can also use the carrot and raise it to the second power. This lets you raise to any power you want. Y'all have fancier calculators. If you have a calculator that takes you up to the second power, you'll have to scroll over to come down from the power. All right, x squared. What was my equation? Minus x minus 6. Now, I know y'all probably know this, but um, I had something. I can't remember if this was. It was in pre-cal yesterday. It was working on a quiz. Minus and negative are two different things on here. Do not use them interchangeably because they're not the same, okay? This is how you make a number negative. This is how you subtract, but be careful. Okay. Everybody good? Ten and six. Subtraction. Minus six. I'm going to do Zoom six. What a Zoom six does is take you to a 10 by 10 window, negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. Generally, you will be able to see your parabolas. If you cannot, okay, the button here that says window, if you click that, that tells you what you want to see in your on your graph, okay? So if I want to see more this way, if I want it to be wider, like my graph way over here on the floor, I'm going to go to X, right? I need to see more of the X. Same with the Y. If I need to see more up, I'm going to make my Y max higher. Or if I need to see down lower, I'm going to make my Y min lower. The scale button where it says X scale 
a wide scale, that just tells you how often you want to tick mark. If you want to tick mark every three, then I would put a three there, and there would be three, six, nine, and then only have one. Y'all following me? Okay. You would be surprised. Okay, graph. Now, Just calculate. What are the, the zeros? Remember in the beginning I told you the solutions are called solutions or zeros or roots. Some people's calculators will say roots. All of those mean the same thing. I'm going to select zero. Now, I've got this question at the bottom that says left bound. I'm going to focus on this zero first. Okay. So I'm going to scroll over close to the zero, and what this is saying is your calculator has to have a range between which it looks where it crosses the x-axis. So when it says left bound, you have to keep clicking left until you have cleared the zero. If you're not sure, okay, this is what I tell my algebra one kids. See the little spider? Put the little spider as close to the zero as you can get. And then click left one, two, three times and hit enter. You should have a little arrow that popped up. See the little arrow at the very top there? It's kind of hard to see because the graph's covering it. It's saying that it's gonna, that's going to be the furthest left it looks for a zero. Then it says right bound. Back to approximately the zero and click right three times. There's not an exact number. You just have to clear the zero. Hit enter. Yes. Now look, understand what this is saying. This is saying it's going to look in between these two values for some place that it crosses the x-axis. So make sure your zero falls between those two places. Yes? Okay, Sarah, you're going to have to help me explain because everybody always sounds understand what this is. What part? Okay. Oh, okay. Huh? Keep going left. Take your spider left until he crosses the x-axis. Somewhere, somewhere around here. And it is, there's not an exact. It could be anywhere here. Oh, as long as it's past the zero. As long as it's past where it crosses the x-axis. So some, I hit enter. Now does it say right down? Okay. Keep hitting your right arrow until it's on the other side of the axis. Your arrows look different than mine. You didn't put your graph on mine. I clicked enter and marked you. Yes, hit enter one more time. And everyone's graph should show you that a zero here is negative two. How do I get to which screen? Does it say guess at the bottom? Hit enter one more time. Yes. You calculated that one. That's okay. That's we're fixing to do the same thing. You have to do each one individually. No, 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 no. Your second trace will follow me. Okay, every second trace number two. 
Second trace two. To the th I'm going to the other one now. So left bound. So I'm going to put my spider close to the point that I want to find, and I'm going to hit left. One, two, three, enter. Now it says right bound, so I'm going back to the point and right. One, two, three, enter, enter. She got it. Thank you, Sam. You're so sweet. Yep. Enter, enter at the last one. You didn't give it a valid range. Some point in between. So what it's doing is it's saying. I can't just find a zero. So when you get tell it left bound and you click like right here. It's drawing the line and saying, OK, I'm only going to look from here over on the graph. And then whenever it says right bound and you click here. It's only looking from here over. So what it's doing, when you see these arrows like this, it's only looking in between these two arrows to find a place where it crosses the x-axis. So you have to give it, you can't, you can't say that this is left bound and this is right bound because then it hasn't changed. You have to be to the left and to the right. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. Now, this is a nice whole number one, but you're going to have ones that it's not. And so you have to know how to input it. I will say this. Remember, your equation must equal zero in order for this to work. No, we're going to do another one. All right, watch. If I want to solve this equation, if I'm looking at this, what multiplies to 4 but adds to negative 6? Nothing. This is a CVF, right? So I can't solve by factoring, which only leaves me to graph and solve because those are the only two methods I've taught you so far. So let's graph it. I got your calculator. It'll already be out. Graph and solve. Solve by graphing. Good morning, Karen High School. It's okay because we have enrichment today. Okay, it does do it. You're just not. <laughs> but I promise it does it. Okay.
All right, second trace. Zero, right? Zero, okay. I'm looking for my spider because it's saying left bound. Oh, I see my spider. Everybody sees my spider? I need to make sure my spider, I click left past the zero. So I need to be somewhere over here with my spider before I hit enter. Okay, watch my spider. There he is. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, now it says right bound. So I'm going to take my spider and I'm going to keep going right until I make sure that I've crossed over that axis and hit enter. You have to cross back over the axis and then homework's posted online, guys. It's on Canvas. Then hit enter one more time to guess. Now look, this one's nasty. It's not a nice whole number. It is. When I'm going to see that question, so point seven six is one of the solutions. Yes. That's one solution. How many solutions should I have? Why? It's hitting the x-axis twice. It's crossing x twice. You guys try to calculate the second one and see if you can get it. Don't get an error. Please don't get an error. Just do it right. <laughs> Why do you want to find the vertex? So you can graph it, opposite B over 2A. We are graphing it, yes. Would you like me to show you how you, yeah. Okay, here's why it doesn't look right, but it is right. Anytime you encounter this on your calculator, this is scientific notation. It's saying I'm negative one times ten, really ten, really 10 to the negative twelve. Your, the pixelation on your calculator is off a little bit. You always assume it's zero. Okay. Okay. calculator are you good with the calculator if you do second trace minimum since that's a minimum and not a maximum you can do left bound right bound and find the vertex okay so let me explain the homework to you okay yes and let me show you what your homework looks like this don't worry about that first little part Find the solutions to each quadratic equation by graphing. They are in standard form. Okay, so you're going to show me the work where you graph how you graph in standard form. Opposite B over 2A, plot your easy point, graph it. Then you're going to use your calculator to find the solutions on the left side. So the middle is by hand, the left is on your calculator. 
That's what you find on the calculator. Yes, x equals. Okay, so if this is if this is my question, you only have seven. So if I graph this opposite b over two a, which is three, right? So on my paper, I'd go ahead and do one, two, three. Here's my axis of symmetry. Y is going to be 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 4. How do I know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Now, my easy point, you're right, is four, so it's all the way up here. Maybe I don't want to do that particular easy point, and maybe I want to do one closer to the vertex, but whatever you want, one, two, three, one, two. Remember, this is kind of a refresher. Some of us struggled with graphing in standard form, so this is a good opportunity to review that before our test. Um, so whenever I graph this, I should be, huh? Um, I don't know yet. Well, we finished the unit. Probably not next week. Probably the first part of the following week, if I had to guess. Yeah. I, X equals 3 and Y equals negative 5. So the vertex is 3, negative 5. How do you be over 2X? So this would all be in this part. And then I'd come over here, graph it on my calculator, and what should happen is these zeros, look, I got 0.76, that, that actually looks pretty close to one, it looks about three, I did pretty good, I think, I've just done it so quickly like that. Thank you, I think so too, I did a good job. Let me go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop.